So I have had my Google Pixel Fold for almost a year now. We're going to be making a year in July. And I actually remember exactly how that transaction went and knowing that this phone costs $1,800, it still becomes a really tough sell. It was a tough sell for me as I had to go through Verizon to try and finance it, but that is a lot to try to finance without a doubt. I actually really like this device after having spent some time with it, but it has a lot of issues and some things that I really feel like are a downgrade from my Pixel 7 Pro. I have a lot to say in this video, but please know that you should be very careful before investing into a Pixel Fold, at least from my experience. So let's dive into the actual review. This is Francisco from Unisure Doctor Phone, and we're going to jump right into it. Now the exterior design consists of stainless steel and glass, which is always welcome. I would say that this build is rather exceptional if anything, and it will show on every aspect of how this device was put together. The edges are stainless steel, and even the hinge where this phone folds open feels really strong. Once opened, you're greeted with some more bezels that are definitely rather thick. But there's also this metal piece on the top and bottom that helps support the hinge. On the top, you will find a speaker grill and a microphone. On the bottom, you will find some more microphones, a speaker grill, and the USB-C port. On the right, you will find a sleep-wake button and a volume controls. Overall, the construction is pretty great and quite literally the only thing that I don't really like about the build is that the seams or the crease still shows on the fold which is a disappointment to say the least. But more on that later. Also, this phone is actually quite small and I do not like that aspect. When closed, it feels like you shouldn't really be using it that way because it doesn't feel natural to use a device this small in 2024. But when folded flat, it feels much better. I haven't spent too much time with the Galaxy Fold, but that device is much larger. So for the folded experience, this device does feel really nice to use for someone with my small hands. But it would just be easier to adjust to working with a larger display than to settle for something smaller. It doesn't feel right to me. So I would like to see a larger fold with the next generation. This device features two different displays with both of them actually having a lot to offer. For example, the main display that you will be using when this device is in its standard configuration is a 5.8 inch 2092 by 1080 OLED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate. This display does look and feel really smooth when navigating thanks to all of the features I mentioned, but it is a little difficult to appreciate when it's so small. Putting this side by side with the Pixel 7 Pro, you can see just how different they are and how much adjusting it will probably take to go from one to the other. Then inside, you will find a 7.6 inch 2208 by 1840 OLED display that also features a refresh rate of 120 Hz. This display is really awesome and honestly a lot easier to appreciate. It's got a lot of great things going for it as it looks incredible, feels incredible and smooth, as well as just being a great size for usage with two hands. So this section was more so on how gorgeous these displays are rather than how usable and we will touch on the usability of the larger display very soon in its own section. But take my word for it when I say that the hardware is truly great here. This device will also feature a stereo set of speakers with one speaker on top and another on the bottom. These speakers don't sound like they get quite as loud as the Pixel 7 Pros but they are still pretty good. There are phone speakers, so I don't expect a lot of depth or anything like that, but the louder the better when it comes to these little devices. So when it comes to other features, here we're actually looking at a face unlock and a fingerprint scanner built onto the power button instead of the display, 120 hertz screens, uh, for both displays, a built-in VPN from Google, proximity sensor for sensing how close your hand is to it and reacting like so, dual SIM cards in the form of nano SIM and eSIM, five years of Pixel updates, and it is still water resistant with a rating of IPX8, but it does lose its dust resistance, which is unfortunate, but not really the end of the world. Another really cool feature is that you can use the rear display to take selfie style photos and video with the quality of a rear camera while still being able to look at yourself through the main display when folded out, which is still really cool. Overall, I think that there are plenty of great features here, and yes, wireless charging is still a thing. Also, keep in mind that this device will fold completely shut, which is beautiful and gives you 180 degrees of range when folding outward. Love that. When it comes to other specs, we have a Google Tensor G2 CPU, a Titan M2 coprocessor, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, featuring a 4,727 million power battery, an 8 megapixel inner camera, 9.5 megapixel front facing camera, and a 48 megapixel rear facing camera. So all these things are going to be pretty great, but we're going to take a greater look 
now. So to get a little more specific regarding the camera modules, let's get some of the most important details out of the way. This device features a 9.5 megapixel front-facing camera that can shoot at up to 4K 60fps. The inner camera is an 8 megapixel camera that shoots at the frame rate and resolution that we just mentioned. The rear cameras are 48 megapixels that can shoot at the same frame rate resolution, but obviously the quality will differ between all of these due in part to the megapixel count. So when it comes to the camera test, we will be splitting this up pretty much into two sections per category, those categories being pictures and videos, and the sections between front-facing and rear-facing. So let's begin with the front-facing cameras first with pictures. This is a Pixel phone, so what can you expect? The camera is fantastic, and there is no going around it. Pictures look really, really good whether you're using the front-facing camera or the rear-facing camera. And in a way, while the front camera is on both the closed and open side of this device, you should probably know that you can use the rear-facing camera to take selfies while you use the main display as your screen. This is incredible because you can use the best cameras for your selfies. I love this. So throughout this video, you should have seen maybe some examples of photos and what they would look like with the front-facing cameras and the rear-facing cameras. It's just a really good experience, and this is a pretty big deal when it comes to selfie-taking, that's for sure. So the videos are going to be just as incredible. It shoots at 4K 60 tops, and the quality is outstanding. Sure, the front-facing cameras are already really good, but they do have some limitations when it comes to the front-facing camera, specifically how wide of an angle you can get. It's much better with the rear-facing camera, and I want to use this one exclusively to get the best videos that I can. I think that this is definitely the way to go. But overall, you do get fantastic cameras for the rear with great dynamic range, and I pretty much have no complaints about them. I just think that this camera is the best in the business when it comes to consumer smartphones, hands down. So hopefully the footage on screen does this justice because there is a lot to look at. Stabilization is also still here and it's probably the best in the business. So this would make for a fantastic camera to use for filming content, even. I really am impressed with the rear-facing cameras in videos and even the front-facing cameras for sure. For the gaming performance, I tried playing Asphalt 9 and got absolutely flawless performance. There really isn't too much to say here because we can expect the best of the best when it comes to mobile performance on a device like this. I genuinely love what they've done here, and playing any game including Genshin Impact should give you zero issues whatsoever with high settings enabled. So good job when it comes to the performance aspect and well gaming performance here too. So the software experience is something that I've really been meaning to get into already after praising the hardware as much as I have, even if I still have some gripes with the design. So the software experience is not very good on this device. While you do get stock Android with minimal things thrown in from Google, you can expect that same stock experience that you would normally look forward to from Google, except that this experience will be very buggy. I've had so many issues when it comes to the software here, which has made it so disappointing. While it feels like the Pixel 7 Pro is really well optimized, I just can't really say the same for the much more expensive Pixel Fold. Icons often disappear from my notifications. This device also overheats really easily, which causes it to restart without my knowledge, which is really annoying. I don't know what is causing this, but this is more hardware related, I suppose. Sometimes the frame rate will absolutely tank as well, as a result of this device getting warmer more easily. I have had instances where some of the navigation buttons just are not responsive whatsoever, which is such a shame too, but this hasn't been too frequent. Sometimes the transition period between the main display and the larger display can take a while to process, which makes it feel less seamless when trying to move from one configuration to the other. I have not been able to send pictures through the Messages app, nor can I send long texts or even stickers and GIFs. This is just so strange that Google thinks that it's Verizon's fault, while Verizon thinks that this is really Google's fault. I'm probably going to need an exchange here. With certain apps, auto-rotate just doesn't really work at all either. So if I want to video chat using Messenger, for example, I can't really rotate my display at all, which absolutely sucks. I know that this isn't the app's fault because this works just fine on my Pixel 7 Pro. And I feel like there is more to mention, but this overall everything, I would say, that has bugged me here. So what about the folded experience? Meaning, what about the experience of using this device when it's completely folded flat? basically in tablet mode. I actually really like it, but simultaneously dislike it. Hear me out. 
It's really cool to use such a beautiful display and this kind of size and it's really comfortable to even type and browse like this. Sometimes watching content and a lot of apps can be a great experience, especially on YouTube with you getting a larger display to look at. You can even fold it in such a way that allows you to prop it up and still get a larger display than usual. And you actually get the bottom portion of the display for managing playback controls. However, that seam in the middle is a bit too distracting at times and many people that I show this display to label this as a, as a turn off. I actually agree with them too. We've all noticed it right away and it is a little difficult to keep your eyes off of it as soon as you notice it. Sometimes it feels like it blends out of sight, but most of the time it will be visible. However, this has changed the way that I use my phone in general. I use this in this configuration as often as I possibly can, but it's not always possible or really even feasible because of the many apps that do not support this configuration. And trust me, there are a lot of apps that don't. Messenger, Instagram, Shop, my banking apps, Zip, PayPal, and many more just don't support it and instead just default to one of the displays. This is a huge shame and these apps desperately need support for folded displays like this. So the folded experience honestly could be much better if it had proper app support from third party apps. If this was an Apple foldable, and I hate to say it, it would have had this kind of support already. So third party developers should really try to optimize for these as they become more popular. If it wasn't for the apps, I would say that the folded flat experience is fantastic, but many apps just don't have that support, which almost kills the purpose of a larger display in general. However, I will say this, when it works with an app like Amazon or YouTube, it works so beautifully. So that's why I have this love-hate relationship with the screen and this device in general. Now, another issue that I have with this device is going to be the battery life. I mostly use this device completely shut because of the app support not being there for the flat display, meaning that it should be lasting me longer, but anything kills a battery rather quickly. I'm usually lucky enough to get a full day of battery with less than typical usage. But with normal usage, this device will easily be on battery saver by the end of the day, which is such a shame as well. The battery life just isn't there for me and I'm very disappointed with that aspect. In conclusion, I will be keeping my Pixel Fold, probably exchanging it for a different one due to the issues that I mentioned since it's likely that my unit is just defective in some way. But either way, it's hard to recommend this for $1800. The hardware is great, but the software experience leaves a lot to be desired. Google should have invested into making sure that there is a lot more third party app support from the most popular apps out there. As right now, it's just not there and I don't see these developers optimizing their apps anytime soon, unless I just haven't heard anything about it. But so far, there is a little that can justify this price tag. Battery life kind of sucks and the software experience is buggy. Not to mention that the lack of app support is just outright disappointing. So while I will keep mine, I will be keeping a very close eye on a version 2 model. Also, if the software experience can't improve, then this might be my last rodeo with any foldable until Android third-party developers start taking this market more seriously. So no, it's not worth your $1,800, and frankly, it probably will never be worth it until foldables become more affordable. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. And just so you know, please make sure to check out our software, OneSure Docker Phone, for all of your mobile needs, as this software can do a lot, from transferring data from one device to another, backing up your device, and even changing your location if you need to, on the fly. Please make sure to leave us a comment down below about what you thought about this review, and make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and this has been Francisco from OneSure Docker Phone. Until next time, have a good one.